Hey guys, welcome to my DIY Arduino drum tutorial part one. Um, I'm going to split it into two parts because the first part is a basic overview. This is going to tell you everything you need to know from all the parts you need and don't need, things that you can do differently, um, software, how everything works together. Okay, so you need to watch this so you can understand how the project works before you build it because that's one thing I saw was a major problem with me going through other video tutorials is that no one explained it properly um, or at least didn't explain all of it so there's one thing that you're always missing but anyway this is a basic overview so everything from the stuff you really need to things that you can do to improve this project or do it differently so this is the Arduino Octopad, if I'm going to call it that now, from the other video. I will link that video down in the description of how this sounds. It's got eight pads, four top, four bottom. You can see that. And then on the right hand side, this lifts up and has all the components inside. So I'm going to use this for visual reference and show you parts one by one. So first part is the sensor part now these are things that you do need so underneath these plates there's this is hard rubber plus a metal plate it can be any metal plate it doesn't have to be um, textured like this so i'll leave this here metal plate so it's a hard rubber can be like a half a centimeter thick plus a plate glued to the bottom of that is one of these sensors called a piezoelectric sensor these are very cheap to buy they do not cost a lot and you get them in different sizes the size doesn't really matter because you can cut it smaller if you are careful so and they don't come soldered that some of them do come soldered and i would prefer you guys to buy that but you can solder them yourselves it is very difficult though so here's one that's been soldered that's been kept the same size i hope the light isn't being too funny anyway kept the same size and then this is one i cut smaller which is not the neatest of cuts but it's not needed for you to do that soldered as well so it's the hard rubber pad metal plate this glued to the underside you can use something like contact which is a, a liquid adhesive or you can use hot glue um, i will get to one that's more preferred but i haven't used any others and underneath that we have soft foam now this has to be soft because as you can see in between the pads is the same foam and all around the edges it's meant to keep your hits that you do on your individual pads so that there isn't you know that this sensor isn't set off when you hit this pad so there's no leakage so it's around about two centimeters of soft foam okay so moving on to what's or how it's set up inside the octopad this sensor has two wires coming off of it, a ground and a signal. It doesn't matter which one is which to which you connect it. All you need are those two wires coming off of it from the center and from the outside. When this sensor is hit, it transfers that kinetic energy into a voltage between these two wires. Okay, so moving on to how it's set up in the brains here. These pads with the sensors on the left hand side are hooked up with audio wire. It doesn't have to be audio wire, but in essence, there are those two wires that I showed you. Let's focus. Those two wires that are coming out and are being soldered into a board. Now you don't have to solder it into a board like this. It was done like this just so I can show and have it neat 
how it's all laid out. So each one of these wires is carrying those two wires from a singular sensor. So if you can see where my finger is now, those two dots above it, those two holes, going this way is how the current is flowing. Because you see the lines are running this way. That's where those wires are running. So in between there, you have a one mega ohm resistor, which is in parallel, which means it's soldered to this connection. And then the other end is soldered to the other connection. So if we have our two wires running like this, it's soldered in between. Now I don't have it here, but I'll put it on screen. You need another component called a Zener diode, which limits the maximum current. And that's simply to protect your Arduino. Continuing, so you have all your eight, um, well, in this case, you have eight sensors, which is bringing through all of their cables here. So we have eight resistors and you would have another eight Zena diodes, which I showed on screen, also in parallel, the same as it is here. And one wire on each of the sensors. So each sensor has two wires. On the other end of these components, you'll have one wire from each going to your Arduino. The other wire from each of the sensors, you'll connect. So this one connection is linked to the next sensors, one connection, and we loop, 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 loop. So each one of these are connected to one wire, and this is your ground wire. So that's what's completing the circuit. So you have two wires coming from each sensor, a resistor in parallel, Zener diode in parallel, and then one of those wires is connected to each sensor's one wire. And then you have eight separate wires for your eight separate sensors. Okay, so moving on to the Arduino board, we have our eight wires from our sensor. These are our singular wires, plus our ground wire that's been all looped up, which completes our circuit. So if I zoom in, I don't know, you probably won't be able to see it, but you have on the Arduino A0 to A15. This is on this particular Arduino, the Mega 2560. You have 16 analog connections. You don't need to know what analog means, but basically those are the ports to which your singular wires run into. And then over here, you won't be able to read it, but there's two ground ports, which are named G and D. So this wire is simply for bleeding purposes. You don't need to know what the term means, but essentially it's to ground between reading all the sensors so that you don't get double hits or fake hits or ghost signals or anything. So that's what that wire is. But from our eight singular wires, I soldered them onto this board to keep it neat. So I could plug pins in rather than plugging the wires in individually. And here's our ground wire also into a pin. So this ground wire will go into the ground port. And then these eight will go into the first eight analog pins. So let me plug it in. So doing it for neat purposes, it just slides in, which makes it a lot more sturdier and safer. Okay, so that's everything that is needed for this project. This encasing is not essential. If you want to make an Octopad like this, then you will need to find a case. This is just a wooden box that I found, but you can find whatever you want. The next component that I actually haven't talked about, but I showed now is the Arduino. The one that I have here is the Mega 2560. It has on the bottom A0 to A15. 
which were the analog inputs. Now the reason the mega is the preferred choice is because it has 16 individual inputs. You can only have as many pads, separate sounds, as you do have inputs. Okay, so the more inputs you have, the more pads you can have, which is for variety in future, if you want to expand. The other thing is you don't have to do the setup like this. You can make a fully fledged, each singular pads drum kit that fits on a frame and everything. You can do it like that as well. It will work. If you do it like that, though, I advise that you make cables rather than just running wires. And what I mean by cables is you can have actual audio connectors like this aux cable where you would solder on your one connection of your pad and then to one of these your second connection. This kind of setup will help if you want to add, for instance, a symbol that has a bell, a different, two different sounds, the bell and the crash. So you can solder the ground of both of them here, plus the bell and then the crash to the other one. But I'll explain that in my building DIY. Okay, so other than that, there's nothing physical that you do need. No other things to order. I know it's a point of, like, people don't want to spend a lot of money. The most expensive thing will be the Arduino. All the other components are dirt cheap. It doesn't matter where you are. They should be dirt cheap. Um, other than that, everything else is based on what you want to build. So if you want to build this Octopad, if you want to build a big drum kit, that's what will cost you more. But everything else is software. And there are two ways of doing it. You can either have an SD card with sounds on it which we are not going to cover in this tutorial. So I'm sorry if people are watching it for that. We are going to cover the version where we have software on the computer, which handles the Arduino and its um, sound software, which will be something like addictive drums. So now I'm going to move over to the computer so I can show you the software you need and the code you need for the Arduino. Okay guys, here we are on the computer and I'm going to show you the software that you need to make this whole process work. Okay, so the software you're going to need, I'll show on Chrome now, but I'll also give you the links in the description. You're going to need the software from Arduino to flash your Arduino with the sketch that I'm going to provide. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this part, I'm going to show it in part 2, but this part I'll explain how it works. So you'll down, let's go down here. You wanna download it from the Windows link if you have Windows and Mac if you have Mac. But as that downloads, I'll talk through the next pieces of software. So next piece of software is called Loop MIDI. Basically what the software does is it makes a virtual cable on your computer. So from the signal that's coming in, that signal needs to go across this virtual cable into your music software because your music software only interacts with a MIDI cable. So here you I'll again provide the link in the soft in the description, but loop MIDI is a fairly small file and it should take very quick to download. The next piece of software is the hairless MIDI to serial bridge. Basically what this does in this picture right here, it takes the signals from your Arduino and converts it into a MIDI note. So based on how you program your sketch, it's going to do it differently, but this takes your signal from your Arduino and turns it into a note. And what happens is, once it's turned it into a note, it sends the, the MIDI output into loop MIDI, that cable that we created. 
So you scroll down and they'll say they have downloads for Mac, Windows and Linux. I'm going to do it for Windows. Okay. Next piece of software will be your actual music software, which is either going to be this software, which is Addictive Drums 2, or Easy Drummer 2. These softwares are paid for. I'm not going to show anyone how to download them illegally. There are ways, but I'm not going to do that. So you guys are going to have to find it yourself or buy this. But there are ways to download it. Um, so basically these softwares is a huge mo music program which has many different drum kits and effects and you can link them to different MIDI notes. So you'll have a page where you can link each MIDI note that comes into a certain sound. And I'll show how that works only in part two. So you must stay tuned for that. So that's what Addictive Drums 2 is, as well as Easy Drummer. So let's go to our downloads folder. And we can extract Loop MIDI and our hairless MIDI to serial. So if we install Loop MIDI, it's just one file, it's very small. Auto start loop MIDI, you don't have to have that. You can have a shortcut. You can just leave that checked and agree. It won't ask for any other. Sorry if the screen goes black, that just happens when you install something with my recording software. Anyways, it's installed. Launching this program, let's drag it to the middle and get rid of these. All you need to know is how to make a port so down here at the bottom you'll make a port name say cable one sorry if there's weird noises cable one and then click the add button so you'll see there it has cable one zero data going through it zero bytes and you can add as many um, cables as you want so we can remove that and we have cable one Next, let's go back to the hairless MIDI. This is also a simple setup, double click. And this is not something you install, so this is just a run file. So if we close this now, you'll see that this serial port has nothing that it can connect to. When you plug in your Arduino and you press on the arrow, you'll have your Arduino listed there. It will say, COM port 9 or COM port 6 or some port that you can connect to. If you have other weird USB devices connected to your computer, those might also pop up there. But for the most part, the Arduino will, own, will be the only thing that pops up there. And then as you see, MIDI out, you'll have this Microsoft GS synth, or you might not, doesn't matter, we don't need it. But then you'll have something called Cable 1, which was our cable we created here. Okay, so now this portion is what connects your Arduino that's plugged into the computer, the signals it's sending, to your either Addictive Drums or Easy Drums. The next part will be the Arduino Drums and the sketch that we will apply to it. The sketch is the code that handles the sensors. Okay, so now for the Arduino, it's finished downloading the Arduino software. So you would extract it from your zip with any software you have. You would go into this folder and run just the plain Arduino application. Should open like so. Okay, my sketch is already open. But I'll show it like this now. Okay, so opening it, be sure, depending on what Arduino you have. If you click on tools, you'll see here it says board and it'll say the board name. You have to set that board name to the board you have. So in my case, it was the Arduino Mega 2560. So you have to set it to that, okay? Um, 
this doesn't really matter it does matter but it should be right depending on the board you select so next thing you'll have to select is it won't show up now because i haven't plugged in my arduino but when you plug in your arduino just like on hairless midi to serial you will get a com port like com 9 or com 6 or whatever number you'll have to select that here you have to do those two things before you can upload the sketch to a board you'll see here it'll have an error because i don't have a board plugged in so yeah the error there's no board plugged in so this code is adapted from this woman that did a YouTube video on a xylophone, so another musical instrument, but from her and Spikenzi Labs, they did the initial code, so I didn't code any of this. This was them, so you can go check them out. Um, you don't need to understand all of this now. I will explain it in its own video for those who really need to know, but an essential overview, we set up variables for the pins you see a1 to a7 the midi notes their minimum value that will trigger them maximum playtime and this value here this boolean if you set it to true then velocity will be on so if you hit soft it'll be soft if you hit loud it'll be loud if you set it to false if you hit it no matter how hard it'll send through the same signal strength so it'll be the same loudness. Other than that, there's just a loop that cycles through continuously to see if a uh, sensor is activated or is still sending a signal. And lastly, it sends through a MIDI message that has your actual message, the pitch and the velocity. And this actual message status one is the MIDI note. So once you have those your board selected and the port selected you would open the code that i give you which is this arduino drums it'll open it and then you will upload to your board and once that's uploaded you can start your other processes which is opening loop midi making a port okay well it's giving me an error now let's just install it again it normally doesn't give this error but if it does give you this error then just reinstall it so you'll set up your loop midi port then you'll come back to hairless midi serial and you'll select your Arduino and you'll select your loop MIDI and then you'll start your music software and select your loop MIDI cable as well and then you're good to go it should start working just in like and then you're good to go it should start working exactly like my other video where I show how the Octopad sounds okay so i'll post all the links to all of those softwares in the video description and i'll also put the arduino code in the description as well so that's it for part one part two will be a building from start to finish as well as explaining the arduino sketch the code and giving a full walkthrough of that so i hope this helps i hope it's a better explanation than other videos you've seen so give me your feedback and I'll see you guys in part two.